So the background for the Bhagavad Gita is that Bhagavad Gita originally appears as an episode in the Mahabharata. Mahabharata is described as the history of greater India. Formerly, the whole earth was ruled by the king whose capital was Hastinapura. So Mahabharata describes the events leading to this discourse of Bhagavad Gita being uh, spoken by Krishna to Arjuna. It describes how Dhritarashtra and Pandu were brothers born in the Kuru dynasty, descending from one king, famous king Bharata, a former ruler of the entire earth. And Dhritarashtra, the elder brother, was blind by birth, so he could not ascend the throne. And the younger brother Pandu became the emperor of the world. But Pandu died at a very early age, leaving behind five sons who were minors at the time of Pandu's death. So Dhritarashtra became the caretaker king till Yudhishthira, the eldest son of Pandu, came of age. Now both the sons of Dhritarashtra, the Kauravas, and the sons of Pandu, the Pandavas, they grew up in the same royal household and both were trained in the military science by Dronacharya. And they were especially counseled also by their grandfather Bhishma. Now the sons of Dhritarashtra, especially Duryodhana, he developed hatred and enviousness towards the Pandavas. Because he knew that when the Pandavas grow up, they are going to occupy the throne. So somehow, with the consent of Dhritarashtra, Duryodhana plotted to kill the Pandavas. But by the protection of Vidura and Krishna, the Pandavas escaped all the attempts of Duryodhana. Now, Krishna, we have to specifically understand, is not just another historical personality like a king. Of course, Krishna was the king of Dwarka at that time, but Krishna is the Supreme Personality of God. And he has descended to this earth in order to uphold eternal religious principles. And he wanted to reduce the burden of the earth which was overburdened by kings who were posing as Kshatriyas, but they were actually demons. So, it is Krishna who arranged this battle of Kurukshetra in order to reduce the burden of the earth. So, in the course of events that led to the Bhagavad Gita, it is described in the Mahabharata that when Duryodhana was unsuccessful in killing the Pandavas, he challenged the Pandavas to a gambling match. And in that gambling match where there was cheating, Duryodhana along with his brothers defeated the Pandavas, sent them away to the forest and began to rule the kingdom. Now the understanding was, after the exile, the Pandavas will get back their kingdom. But when the Pandavas completed their exile, term of exile, 13 years, 
now they went to duryodhana and asked him for their own kingdom but duryodhana refused so pandavas duty bound to actually maintain themselves by ruling by public administration as kshatriyas they requested duryodhana just give us five villages for five brothers but duryodhana arrogantly replied that he will not spare any land not even a small bit of land he will spare to the pandavas so pandavas were forced to fight in this battle against the kauravas because they were challenged that way by duryodhana now still yudhishthira thought instead of fighting he requested <coughs> krishna to play the role of the messenger on behalf of the pandavas and krishna personally went to duryodhana and tried to negotiate for peace but duryodhana refused even krishna then war became inevitable and the whole world was divided into two parties those who would fight on the side of the pandavas and those who would side fight on the side of the kauravas most importantly it was to be decided whose side would krishna's army fight because krishna had a very powerful army who were uh, not at all defeated in any battle since krishna himself is the supreme lord he decided that he is not going to actually fight himself he is going to be on one side and his army is going to be on the other side so he wanted to offer this choice between himself and his army to both the kauravas and pandavas now duryodhana he was making material calculations and he thought since krishna's army is very powerful and krishna himself is not going to fight so he wanted krishna's army on his side arjuna was not making calculations like duryodhana arjuna wanted krishna on his side so when arjuna chose krishna duryodhana was very happy to have krishna's army on his side and arjuna was actually also very happy to have krishna on his side because arjuna knew that uh, it is important to have krishna rather than his army so this is where both the armies have assembled to fight and the bhagavad gita begins so the bhagavad gita begins with a question by dhritarashtra dhritarashtra's question is being asked to his secretary sanjaya dhritarashtra is sitting in hastinapura the battle is arranged to be fought in kurukshetra because sanjaya was a student of vyasadeva disciple of vyasadeva so by vyasadeva's mercy sanjaya was able to envision the battlefield sitting in hastinapura and thus sanjaya was describing to dhritarashtra the events that were happening on the battlefield of kurukshetra so dhritarashtra's inquiry was after assembling in the place of pilgrimage at kurukshetra dharmakshetre kurukshetre he particularly mentions kurukshetra the place where the battle is going to take place as dharmakshetra a place of pilgrimage he is asking sanjaya 
being desirous to fight what did my sons and the sons of pandu do this is because dhritarashtra is very anxious about the outcome of the battle and he knew that the holy place will have a favorable influence on the pandavas because pandavas were very virtuous still he was hoping that somehow his sons will win the battle and sanjaya in reply to dhritarashtra's question he began to narrate the different incidents that were taking place on the battlefield of kurukshetra so sanjaya began to describe the situation that both the armies have assembled yes now after duryodhana saw the pandava army he immediately went to his teacher dronacharya and began to speak now why did duryodhana immediately go to his teacher after seeing the pandava army it is described that duryodhana became very fearful upon seeing the pandava army but to cover up his fear he diplomatically went to dronacharya in order to assess the relative strengths of both the armies so he began to describe the relative strength of both the armies especially mentioning the maharathis on both sides and his conclusion was that our strength is immeasurable because we are perfectly protected by bhishma the most experienced and the greatest of all generals and the strength of the pandavas being protected carefully by bhima is very limited so he concluded that he is going to be victorious in the battle we should also remember that the mahabharata describes on the kaurava side there were 11 akshohini divisions of soldiers and the pandavas had just seven akshohini divisions so pandavas had lesser number of experienced generals had a smaller strength of army pandavas had krishna on their side but krishna had taken a vow not to engage himself in fighting with any weapons and arjuna had krishna as his chariot driver <coughs> so uh, the assessment of duryodhana seemed to be well uh, calculated that duryodhana's strength was actually much much greater than the strength of the pandavas now bhishma who was fighting on the side of duryodhana the kauravas he could understand what was duryodhana's feeling when he approached dronacharya bhishma could make out that duryodhana had become very depressed on seeing the pandava army so bhishma wanted to cheer up duryodhana and he began to blow his conch shell very loudly assuring duryodhana that duryodhana has the full support of bhishma and all the others on his side as soon as bhishma blew his conch shell all the others on the kaurava side loudly blew their respective instruments and this uh sound of the different instruments became very very tumultuous after they finished blowing all their instruments on the other side the pandavas beginning with krishna then arjuna bhima yudhishthira nakula sahadeva and so many other kings 
on the Pandava side began to blow their respective conch shells. Now on the Pandava side, they were all blowing separately. On the Kaurava side, they all blew at a time. On the Pandava side, one after another, one after another, one after another. After the Pandavas finished blowing their conch shells, it is described specifically that this blowing of the conch shells by the Pandavas shattered the hearts of the Kauravas. So there is a very important lesson for us. What is that? That one who takes shelter of the Supreme Lord Krishna has nothing to fear even in the midst of the greatest calamity. See, when the Kauravas were blowing their conch shells, the Pandavas were not at all affected. When the Pandavas blew their conch shells, the Kauravas became completely fearful of the blowing of the conch shell. The battle is not begun yet. It is just the blowing of the conscience that itself shattered the hearts of the Kauravas. After that, Arjuna requested Krishna, please take my chariot between the two armies so that I can see against whom I have to fight. So Krishna drew up the chariot in the midst of both the armies. Now Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. But he has agreed to uh, engage in the service of his devotee, Arjuna. This is one of the special qualities of Krishna. He is described as Bhakta Vatsala. That means he is very, very affectionate to his devotees. But we should always remember that Krishna as the Supreme Lord, even though he accepts a subordinate position to his, to anybody, to his devotee even, his position is unchanged. He remains the Supreme Personality of Godhead under all circumstances. So in that way, uh, Krishna's position is unchanged. But still, out of affection for his devotee, he is engaging in his devotee's service. So what did Krishna do? He took the chariot and stopped right in front of Bhishma and Drona and told Arjuna, look at the Kuru army. What did Arjuna see? Arjuna saw all different grades of relatives. It is described in detail. He saw ten different grades of relatives. He saw fathers, grandfathers, teachers, maternal uncles, Brothers, sons, grandsons, friends, father-in-law, well-wishers. So many grades of relatives on both the sides. Seeing them, he became overwhelmed with compassion. And he began to speak to Krishna. My dear Krishna, seeing my relatives present before me in a fighting spirit, my body is... Quivering. My mouth is drying up. My hair is standing on end. My bow Gandhi was slipping from my hand. And my skin is burning. I am forgetting myself. My mind is reading. I am unable to stand here anymore for fighting. Now it is explained. Such symptoms in Arjuna were not due to any weakness of heart. Arjuna was not afraid seeing the opposite army. Unlike the Kauravas, it is already described. Hmm? No, Arjuna was not afraid. These symptoms were due to his soft-hearted nature because Arjuna is a pure devotee of Krishna. So it is described in the Srimad Bhagavatam, one who has pure devotion, yasyasti bhakti bhagavati akinchana, 
सर्वैर्गुणस्तत्र सामसते सुरा ऑल गुड क्वालिटीज दट आर बी फाउंड इन डेमीगर्ड्स आर फाउंड इन ए प्योर डिवोटी ऑफ कृष्णा सो देर फॉर अर्जुन आफ्टर एक्सपीरियंसिंग दिस काइंड ऑफ सिमटम्स ही बिगैन टू consider what are the consequences of fighting this battle and killing the enemy he told krishna how can there be any good by killing our own kinsmen in this battle so arjuna says i don't want any victory i don't want any kingdom i don't want any royal happiness because sin will overcome us if we kill our enemies because these people overtaken by greed they are not seeing what's the consequence they are ready to destroy a whole dynasty why should we engage in these sinful activities then he traces what happens if the dynasty is destroyed the eternal family tradition is completely vanquished what happens then the rest of the family becomes involved in irreligion then women are unprotected they become corrupt there is unwanted population then with the increase of unwanted population family traditions are destroyed then there is no offering of oblations to the forefathers Now, due to evil deeds of these destroyers of family tradition, all kinds of community and welfare projects are completely devastated. Then, what is the result of all this? Those who destroy family traditions always dwell in hell. So, what's happening? By fighting in this battle, engaging in sinful activities. simply for some royal happiness we are prepared to commit greatly sinful activities leading us to suffer in hell so saying this arjuna he simply set aside his bow and arrows and sat down on his chariot see arjuna had stood up to see the enemy but now after observing the enemies he sat down on his chariot his mind overwhelmed with grief at the prospect of having to fight against his own kinsmen and the conclusion of this chapter is that arjuna is a kind and soft hearted person in the devotional service of the supreme lord such a devotee is fit to receive self knowledge so this first chapter of the bhagavad gita describes how the stage is set for krishna to speak the bhagavad gita instruct arjuna in the subject matter of self knowledge brahma vidya Bhagavad Gita has two very important uh, subjects Brahma Vidya the science of the self or the science of the soul and Yoga Shastra the science of yoga so Brahma Vidya and Yoga Shastra these are the two very important subjects that are delineated by krishna in the bhagavad gita so this is the end of the first chapter beginning with the second chapter krishna will speak the science of the soul and the science of yoga through arjuna krishna is going to enlighten us hmm? krishna is making arjuna his student uh, to speak this bhagavad gita for our benefit so i'll stop here shrimad bhagavad gita ki jai shri prabhupad ki jai